So I'd like you to be aware that this Thursday at 11.30, we have the School of Business, State Bank of Southern Utah exec, Business Executive Speaker Series. And this is a, a Chip Child, who's the CEO and President of SkyWest. And he's going to talk about what, the, what he's learned from business. So I'd like to get like to invite you to attend that if you would like to. Um, I think it's going to be a great, a great uh, a speech that he's going to give. Um, we have a couple people that need to make announcements. So let's we'll start with the Entrepreneurship Club. I'm here on behalf of the Entrepreneurship Club. I'm an active member, and as well, Dakota Denver is our president. He's going to be in your class this semester. Good. And Noah Evans is also an active member. And I'm just here to let, I've been visiting a couple of business classes this past week and last week, just to let students know about the resource that they have here at SU. The Entrepreneurship Club is once a week in the business building on the second floor in the study rooms. So if you don't know where that is, that's okay, you can ask somebody. But basically it's a wonderful place where you can it's meet. It's BU 209 is the number. BU 209, thank you for that. It's a great place for you to meet like-minded students who are interested in owning their own business or starting a business or just being an entrepreneur in general, inventing things, creating things, solving problems. And you can go and meet these students, network, brainstorm your ideas, and really get pumped about your ideas as well. So if you're interested in that, you can contact Dakota or Noah, or you can just ask me any questions that you need or want answered at jacob.w.lyman at gmail.com. So that's my email. Feel free to ask me any questions you have or these guys as well, and you are all more than welcome to join us. So that's, again, that's at 6 o'clock tonight, it's Tuesday, every Tuesday, in the business building on the second floor in the study room. So. Is there food? Yeah. There sometimes are, yeah. <laughs> sometimes we have a bit of cookies. So. We are club bankers. So. We do have cookies. <laughs> phenomenal. So. Uh, any other questions that you guys have? Before I turn the time over to Dean. Can I get the time again? Yes, two, every Tuesday at 6 p.m. And the business building study rooms. Great question. Cool. Artie, thank you guys for your time. Then I'll turn the time over to the team. Okay, I have Ainsley Lloyd with the announcement. Thanks so much. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Ainsley Lloyd, and I work for a nonprofit called Quater. Um, we run entrepreneurship programs throughout the state of Utah, and we're actually starting a group here in Cedar City um, for. Entrepreneurs, students, non-students, anybody who has a business idea they want to work on together. We have a, one meeting a week where everyone comes together and uh, works on the problems that are holding them back in their business that particular week. Um, we teach a lot of tools borrowed from the tech industry to try and help people be more productive, run better meetings, and be better entrepreneurs in general. So if that sounds like something you might be interested in, um, we're having a meeting at 3.30 today at the Brian Coffee House. Um, so stop by and say hello. If you can't make it, you can leave me your email, and I'll send you a bit more information. Entrepreneurship Club guys, let's talk afterwards because I think we should. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Okay, and one last item of business. We we scheduled this class at 11:40 because last semester we had some students that needed that time to get here. Um, but it would be much better if we could start this, this class at 11.30 and have 10 more minutes for the luncheon period. So for those who are signed up as students in this class, could you make 11, who could not make 11.30? Everybody can make 11.30? Okay, so I think let's change this. We'll change this class period. To start at 11.30, it'll go 11.30 to... Uh, 12.50 and then we'll get get over to the lunch and give you 10 more minutes with the speaker because I know a lot of you have to leave at 1. 12, excuse me, 12.20 and we would, yeah, 12.20. Okay, um, this is the only time I'm going to call the roll uh, because we didn't have a way, I guess I, guess I could have emailed you, but please bring your, your student ID cards with you we're going to have you swipe into the class, and that's how we take roll, okay? 
Okay, today we're going to go over the syllabus real quick. Um, I'll show you some special parts of Canvas you'll need to know about. And then uh, we'll have Rich Christensen's going to give us some, give you some instructions, okay? So, or some information of opportunities. Okay, so this class you will hear from 12 highly successful entrepreneurs. Okay. You'll develop a business idea. You'll present your business idea at the end of the semester in a 90 second pitch during the final period for the class. And we have fewer students, so we'll probably do 90 second pitch and 90 second question and answer from, the, from your fellow classmates. Um, for those of you that are enrolled in the, that are, that are going to be participate in the best business idea competition, that can count for your presentation, okay? And the material you submitted for that presentation, you can submit for this last part. Um, well, you'll do a, a final, you know, at the end of the semester, you'll do a final uh, business kind of a outline. You can submit that to me, okay? And we'll talk a little bit more of that later. Okay, and then uh, prepare for these for the future competitions we have. Uh, you, can, you can compete in Collegiate DECA if you want to, or you can also compete in future, or the Phi Beta Lambda, which is Collegiate Future Business Leaders of America. You can compete at the state and national level. There's 12, I think it was, I can't remember this one, but it's either $750 to $1,200 in, in first place prize money if, if, if you compete well in that event. And if you want to do that, I have the information for you. I didn't put it in the syllabus. It caused a lot of people confusion. So we kept it simple in the syllabus. But if you want to do these other things, you're welcome to do them. Okay, so at the top of your syllabus, this is just how you get a hold of me. I'll, be, I'll have office hours one hour before class or by appointment. Since I'm the dean, I'm there all, usually all the time. Okay. Uh, you just need to, you can make an appointment or just drop in, see uh, administrative assistant, which is Kaylin Jensen. Raise your hand, Kaylin, so they can see. Okay, she'll help you connect with me. Uh, there, the home page is at su.edo faculty templin. The student drive is classes templin entrepreneurship speaker series. The current syllabus will always be there. Um, uh, as well as uh, if I have any PowerPoint presentations to post there, I'll also post them to Canvas. So you'll have two sources um, to get that information. No required text, yay, right? Okay, uh, there are some selected references if you're interested in them, uh, they're listed in, this, in, the, in the syllabus. Uh, the one by Osterweiler et al is Business Model Generation. It is really a cool book. It's, it, it looks kind of simple when you look at it, but it is deep. And is a great uh, way, a model, of how to think about your business with channels and everything like that, okay? And then the other one is the zigzag principle. And the author is right here, Rich Christensen. He's gonna give you some information probably from that book. Okay. These are the course objectives. The essential learning outcomes we cover from SUU is communication, creative thinking, critical thinking. Um, it tells about the competencies and everything. I'm gonna let you read that for yourself because we've got to get going. And probably grading is important to you. So there's four elements of your grade. There's attendance and participation, which is 50%. I mean, this is a speaker series, okay? Uh, you'll do journal entries, reflective journal entries, one for each speaker. Consisting of two paragraphs, you do not have to write, you do not have to do an outline and tell me everything that the speaker said. Because you know what? I'm here. I, hear, I heard the speaker, okay? And if I don't hear the speaker, I'll, I'll, I'll go and watch the video of the speaker. So don't just tell me everything the speaker said. What I want in the, and, and, and I'll, well, maybe I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but shorter is a little bit better, not too brief, okay? So journal entries, 20, worth 24% of your grade, your written business idea um, or leadership skills, I prefer you do the business idea, is 16% and the presentation is worth 10%. Okay, oh. So let's do talk about the journal entries. It consists of two parts. 
The first part is your reflection on what the speaker said. And what about that speaker, what that speaker said, did you find would be compelling or would be something that you think you could use? And then talk to me about that. Okay? Probably at least one thing, maybe two or three things. One good paragraph. One sentence is not a paragraph. Okay? Two sentences is barely a paragraph. So give me a good paragraph. Okay? The second paragraph is, discuss with me the, the, the formulation of your business idea. Okay? Because we've had students who are saying well, they want to do an app, but they didn't know how to develop an app. We were able to give them some, through the course of the, of the uh, semester, other students would find information out with some websites that could help them. We gave them, we could get, we gave them some ideas of things that they could do to help develop that, that app, okay? So we'll try to provide you some feedback there that might help you, okay? So two good paragraphs. Okay. okay, here's the schedule. You'll notice that we have every, uh, we have the speakers already scheduled, and we have some really wonderful speakers coming. Um, and more women entrepreneurs coming this time than last time, so that's really good too. So anyway, these, this is the schedule. You got 12 speakers. Our final exam period is the first day of final exams on April 24th from 1 to 2.50, okay? That is the correct date and time. Okay, so further opportunities. There's a St. George concept to company business plan competition that you can compete in. There's the Utah Entrepreneurship if, Challenge. If you are competing in the Best Business Idea Competition, which is happening, I think, in about a week or two, if you win that, you will be a semi-finalist in the Utah Entrepreneur Challenge. Otherwise, you've got to submit your materials and get selected for that. There's, I think the St. George has about 30,000 in prize money and, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, services. And I think that the Utah Entrepreneurship Ship Challenge has about 70,000, okay? Uh, we have National Business Plan Competitions, RICE. I'm not sure, we're, we're maybe too late to do it. They just announced it, but maybe we could get into that. Uh, we have PBL State, a national competition, Collegiate DECA State National Competition. If you want to be, if you want to compete in those areas, you can, you can use the, what you're doing in this class. You can get credit, credit for it, okay, to, uh, to do those competitions. Okay, additional resources. We have the Utah Entrepreneur Leadership Council. We used to call that the uh, Founders Group. Now it's the, now it's the SUU Entrepreneur Leadership Council. So one of the founding members of that is, is Rich, okay? And I think we're up to what, five or six members and growing? Okay. They will serve to be mentors. They help fund, they, they fund the, the uh, luncheons that we have. They're going to be a great resource, okay? We also have the SU Business Resource Center, Small Business Development Center that can help you. We have, you can, you can pursue a certificate in entrepreneurship and small business management that's open to all majors. And we have Management 3210 Entrepreneurship Club that you can take. Um, and we open that to all, to all majors as well, okay? One of that's, we don't have very many upper division classes. This class and the, and the entrepreneurship class, very, a limited number of upper division business classes open to all majors, so. Okay, any questions? Did a whirl through this syllabus. Okay, almost all the questions that I get through the course of the term are answered in the syllabus. Okay, so keep track of it. It's, it's available on Canvas. Oh, I do need to show you a couple places on Canvas here. Um, to sign up for the luncheons. You go to lunches, lunch with speakers, and here are all the luncheons, okay? And you just sign up for it. I'd like you to sign up. You should sign up for, uh, for up to six luncheons, okay? You don't have to, but it's, it's a prerogative of the member class uh, being in this class. You can sign up. If you sign up for six, that would be half of them. That gives everybody in the class a chance to enroll uh, in those. 
at the end, uh, at the, uh, during the class period, if there are any slots available, we'll let you know. And you can then attend more than six if you'd like to, if we, did, if we haven't reached the limit. I think the limit is like 20 students, so. Okay. And that's how you do it. You go to the people area, go to the lunch with speakers tab, and then enroll yourself in the ones that you want to attend. Okay, if you need to make up, you can make up four class periods. Okay, more than that if you have excused absences, but you can make up four because we realize sometimes schedules don't always mesh. So you go to the files area. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, it's not files, it's pages. Okay, so if you, go, if you go to pages, this is the last speaker we had in the last, uh, in the last class. It won't be there, I'm just as if for, so you see it. So you go there, it'll have the name of the speaker, it'll have the uh, date of the speaker. You can click on that and you can watch the video of the speaker. You can make up uh, up to four classes. You can get up to 90% of the participation, attendance participation points, okay? Now, be a little patient. It, we try to get them up as soon as we can, but sometimes it takes us a week. So if you need to make it up, don't worry about the due date. The debt, well, I don't say don't worry about it, but the due date, if you're making it up, you can go beyond the due date because we realize you've got to, it takes some time to get the speaker up. You've got to watch the speaker and then do it and then write your, your reflective journal. So we'll give you allowance for that, okay? So... Those are, those are two areas that you need to be aware of and get access to that you may not have used in other, in other classes in Canvas. So any questions? Yes? How long do the lunches go to? Um, they often go till 1.30 or 2 o'clock, but, but we realize a lot of students have 1 o'clock classes. So we, we know that that's why we want to get there a little bit earlier. And then 1 o'clock, some of the students leave. And the others linger around, and I've seen them go to as late as what, 2 o'clock or 2.30, because they've been engaged with the speaker. It gives an opportunity one-on-one -on -one with them, so. Okay, Rich. Good morning, everyone. How are you today? How many of you took the lecture series last time? And how many did it? We're about half. We're about half, yeah. About half and half, okay. Well, uh, I'm really excited about the speakers this time. We had some really good, really good speakers uh, last time. Uh, those, those of you who are in it, give, give me a few highlights. Some of, some of the speakers that really identified and some of the things you learned. Let's do a transfer. So we get you recorded. Awesome. Any other comments? Any other uh, key learnings or anyone that just really rocked your world? I'm I like some of the speakers. Like Curtis Blair spoke. His presentation wasn't so much about like the details of how he did business, but he, he had a music demonstration and then talked about how, I guess, small changes can get, you know, lead to innovation. So right. Before that class, you, know, you think so much about all these things you have to do, but there's presenters that kind of show you that there's other ways to kind of reach your goals. Great. I think the thing that you're going to find is, is each speaker is going to identify or not identify a little bit with you, and that's actually okay. I'm sure some of you love Garrett. Garrett's incredibly charismatic, and it's like he has this, uh, we call him GQ Jesus. Uh, he's, he's a great guy. And... Uh, uh, but his message will subscribe differently to like a methodical message. And so I uh, really, I, I guess the point I wanted to make here is, is kind of the burden is on you guys. Uh, what I can tell you is the speakers that are coming here are absolutely amazing, incredible. Uh, Amy Cook Osman owns uh, the agency that handles all of the, the media for Huffington Post. So if you're seeing an article being posted in Huffington Post, Amy Cook Osmond is the, or Amy Osmond Cook is the one behind that. Uh, Rick Ma, 
Um, I noticed there was no title up there about Rick. Do you know what Rick did? Uh, when you guys were still thinking, well, you probably weren't even born, half of you, he was the person to launch a company that actually created websites for Excite.com. Got caught up in the meltdown, and then he created Utah.com. So incredibly rich, deep, amazing background that you can pull from. Uh, uh, let's see, who do we else do we, we got? We got Amy, uh, Amy Reese coming. She's probably the most successful uh, woman that I've ever met and has as much influence and power as anyone I've met and has, uh, has an investment company and also created a major, uh, I think she had a, I don't know if it was a billion dollar exit, but it was close to it. So some amazing individuals to, uh, coming down here and I really hope you guys take the opportunity to connect with them, to ask really good questions and for heaven's sakes, I hope that we get a full crowd to, to hear these amazing individuals. There's three things I wanted to do today really quickly. I know that this is the advanced setup uh, class for, for everything coming up, but there's three things I wanted to do. The first is, is I wanted to go through zigzag principle really quickly. And just the fundamental tenets is, is a, as a business owner, the key steps that can get you to success quickly. The second is, is I wanted to go through some tools, some secret kind of tools that we all talk about. And I don't know, you guys may be aware of some of these, you may not. Uh, but I wanted to kind of tell you some of the secret little tools that we keep in our pockets and our, our tool bets of how you can do a business really quickly. And then the third, I just wanted to hopefully give enough time that you can ask uh, any questions that you have of me. I'll also comment that we're starting to do mentoring sessions as the Founders Group. And the reality is that we're going to match that to you guys' energy. So this is the semester that I'm hoping we actually launch a couple of businesses. When all is said and done, more is usually said than done. <laughs> and I think it's time we quit talking about it and actually do it. And so we're making ourselves available. We'll, we'll have a, to match your level of interest and desire. We're going to have very, very successful entrepreneurs down here to help mentor and guide and to, to work with you to help get businesses launched uh, through the semester. And we'll provide as many founders or as few founders as is needed to match that. So Dill? So will you guys all commit to me, you'll come with bright eyes and bushy tails and really get after this lecture series? Thank you. Um, let's see, where to start? Would you rather start talking about zigzag principle or would you rather have me tell you secret tools? Everyone who wants secret tools? Secret tools? Okay. So I actually wrote these on the way down, which probably wasn't a good idea to do, but uh, <laughs> I didn't crash, which was, a good <laughs> which was good news. Uh, number one tool. Don't follow that example. <laughs> Don't follow that example. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure I can read it due to that, but uh, number one tool. Uh, have any of you heard of Fiverr? Everyone who's heard of Fiverr, raise your hand. One, two, okay, so we're about, oh, good. That's a good little tool. Anything you want done in this world, you can get done for five bucks. If you need a paper edited, you can go on Fiverr and have one edit it for five bucks. Uh, uh, Amy, uh, Osmond Cook sent this little blog message out about how people are much more likely to read if you have a little icon made of yourself, a little picture icon. I went on to Fiverr and a day later I had a little icon of myself created, five bucks. Uh, so any little editing, if you need a picture uh, brightened up or cleaned up, you can get it done for five bucks. Fiverr.com is a really cheap cheap, simple little outsourced method that you can get all sorts of little uh, projects created. Yes? Is that like Fiverr? Like F-I-V-E-R. F-I-V-E-R.com. Two, two, two R's? F-I-V, yeah, it's in my bookmarks. Two R's. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing what you can get done there. And I mean, there's some black hat stuff that's done on there that I don't encourage, like link forcing and stuff like that. But in general, all over the world, it's an outsourced resource. Um, second tool, and this used to be called Elance. One of the big challenges that I've heard over and over and over, and I've met with several of you, uh, and one of the big challenges is, is hey, I, I want to develop this app, but I don't know an engineer to de develop an app. And that actually isn't a problem if you have access to this next tool. And it's called, uh, used to be called Elance, it's now called Upwork. Have any of you heard of Upwork? Anyone who's heard of Upwork, raise your hands. Okay, so we got two out of the whole classroom. That is actually a worldwide marketplace that you can put out your project and people all over the world will bid. And I can get engineers that will bid in India 
or Pakistan for three or four dollars an hour or a project basis to someone who's willing to do it for two hundred and fifty dollars an hour so it's basically the uh, the online marketplace for all the really big uh, projects that you can do mostly engineering mostly engineering it used to be called Elance but it was recently updated to called up Upwork cool Okay, cool. Uh, what about, uh, how do you source something from China? Let's say you want a project built or you need to be, get some little piece of technology built or something like that. Any suggestions where I would go to get that built? By the way, I'm giving you guys gold here, so you better write these down. Okay. Um, that is exactly the right answer. Alibaba.com is the world resource, it's the world marketplace for wholesale inventory. Um, Let's see, let's go to an example. Let's go to that little bottle. You hand me that bottle right there. How much does that bottle cost in the store? Probably six, seven bucks. Hmm. Think that cheap? Twelve bucks, I bet. Ten bucks. Let's say ten bucks just to make it easy. Wholesale value of that is, is five bucks. So the store you bought from that from got it for five bucks. The distributor bought that for three dollars and fifty cents. The manufacturer then bought it from a, a manufacturing facility in China and the reality is is that right there probably costs them 20 cents to manufacture 20 to 25 cents to manufacture probably cost them another 20 cents to ship it across the ocean but uh, it's a that's a 20 cent bottle the place that you find that in bulk in volume and you can find almost any manufacturing in Asia is through Alibaba thanks for that I have no idea after I misspelled fiber I'm not even gonna try <laughs> A-L-L-I-B-A-B-A. -L -L -A -A. Yeah, when L, okay. Google it. Um, my next, and this is probably my favorite app that uh, you, probably most of you guys know and use this, but Google Apps. Uh, how many people use Google Spreadsheets or Google Apps or Google Documents? So pretty high volume of that. Do you know that back when I was first starting to be an entrepreneur, a, a technology that would allow me to collaborate and share like that, it cost like $2,000, $3,000 a month. And the only businesses that had that were mid, middle-sized businesses. Everything else had to be done, I mean, through email or uh, belabored. And so you, utilizing Google Docs is an amazingly powerful way for you to launch your business and to collaborate and to share documents, keep track of confidential information. There's not one business that I personally run and own that the first thing I do after I set up the company is establish a sequence of Google Docs to track the company. Okay, so Google Docs, amazing resource. I know I guess part of this uh, discussion is, is never in the history of the world. I'm kind of old school. I hate to show it now, but I'm starting to turn a little bit gray. So I've seen a little bit of uh, era. Never in the history of the world, never in the history of the world has there been so many amazing opportunities. And quite frankly, you know, the burden is kind of on you guys to create the company. Because it used to be a heck of a lot harder than it is right now. And never has there been so many opportunities to create a business. So really challenge you to get after it and create them. Okay, the next one is my favorite, uh, my favorite little mantra. Uh, I talked about intellectual capital plus relationship capital equals financial capital. Uh, who remembers that from last time? Okay, good. Get smart. With that smart, serve other people. If you do that, it leads to money. So the big challenge that most individuals have is, is how do you get to key decision makers? LinkedIn is the answer. Uh, if you don't have a LinkedIn account, make sure you go set up LinkedIn. Friend me. I'll, I'll accept your invite. And you know what? Then instantly you'll be one removed from my entire network. So if you need to get, if I need to get to the CEO of Warner Music, I'm very confident that I could do it in a matter of a couple of days through my LinkedIn network. Certainly, I'll know someone directly that is one step removed and connected that I can call up and say, hey, will you introduce me to Jack? So the same thing is true with you guys. If you want to expand your relationship capital and there's specific individuals you're trying to get to, the best way to do it and to find out what the lay of the land is. Who the keep I just used it this last month. Uh, we're heading over to Vietnam this next week and I wanted to meet with the head buyers of Costco in Japan. How the heck do I find that out? Well, LinkedIn. Uh, gets that information to me really quickly. So LinkedIn is a super powerful tool. The next one is, is kind of boring, but I'm going to put it down anyways. It's QuickBooks Online. Um, 
No need to run your, your business anymore on a spreadsheet. And QuickBooks, it is a subscription fee, but it actually is a very, very powerful way to manage your finances. Make sure your cash flows up. QuickBooks Online is, is one of the most amazing things that has happened in my business life in the last 10 years. Just being able to get that access to information from anywhere and to keep that up to date. So QuickBooks Online. And then the last one is, is these collaboration tools. Uh, I personally use Skype. But uh, being able to collaborate and uh, pull up joint meetings and to be able to share screens and all of that, that's an amazing tool. And I assume most of you know Skype and use Skype, right? Okay, those are my seven secret uh, zigzag uh, uh, power tools uh, that, that entrepreneurs should be using. Any questions about that or any, anyone want to make a comment there? Yeah? Okay, so you mentioned uh, you'll set up a, a list of Google Docs to yeah. track the business. What? What are you looking at, or, or what are you creating at that stage? Um, the first thing I do is, is create a shared confidential information, where I put the EIN number, the address, the registered agent, and then just any password, any username, anything that needs to be shared by strategic people gets dumped into that. Um, those of you that know me also know I, I have several really important tools that I use to evaluate. Is it a good idea or is it a bad idea? Is it a stupid idea or is it a good idea? Or how do I, I evaluate a biz, the business decision? Every single one of those gets put into Google Docs and gets collaborated on. Um, an Excel spreadsheet is mildly interesting to me, but being able to have multiple people collaborate simultaneously and run and analyze a, a, a sheet is insanely interesting to me. So, I mean, there's, I, I don't think there's a day that goes, I don't think there's a day that has went by in the last five years that in some form or another I haven't been on a Google Doc with members of my team collaborating some type of decision. If you have a, a board meeting, you don't write it down, you actually put it into Google Doc and everyone can see it real time. If you're making critical decisions, everyone can brainstorm it and actually see it real time and it's it saved there permanently for everyone to have access to. So that's the power. It's just quick access to one central repository of information. Which it doesn't, I mean, to, to you guys, you kind of grew up in that era. But I mean, think, think about, I w in the late 80s, I was actually one of the first ones into India. Uh, I remember going down an old road and it was a dirt road. I mean, you'd never believe that now, but how do you collaborate with India? It was a big deal when we got a 64K uplink on a satellite. And you know how we downloaded an upload? I mean, you guys think I'm crazy. I'm not. This is true. This is honestly true. We would get software updates every other day. And it would take four hours in the middle of the night to uplink the work that they had done in Bangalore, India, I India to our facility in Novell. And now it's like real time. So, I mean, these collaboration tools, you guys kind of take it for granted, but it's pretty, it's pretty freaking cool technology that you guys have access to. Okay. Any other questions or comments on the tools? Yeah, Noah? With Upwork, you talk about there's, there's these different uh, engineers that do different prices. Do you recommend being careful? I mean, in terms of... <coughs> I've never once ever had a problem. I know uh, you, uh, this, the number one thing I seem to get back from SU is somebody's going to steal my idea. <laughs> Guess what? Idea is the easy part, guys. It really is. Idea is the easy part. It's actually the execution of the idea that's the hard part. And most of the guys developing of this are more worried about feeding their kids two bowls of rice a day than they are about stealing your idea. And I'm sorry to say it, but quite frankly, uh, your ideas aren't as good as you think they are most of the time. <laughs> Get it out there and share and be more open about it and, uh, and benevolent with your ideas and concept and giving. The real successful people I know in my life give. They don't hold back and sequester. There's enough for everybody and then a whole bunch more. So don't, don't be so uptight about people stealing your ideas. All I mean, th there's key times if you're walking into, into uh, Intel and you have the new technology that's going to save the world, you know, put it on a non-disclosure. But generally, you guys are worrying way, way, way too much about your super cool idea than you need to. Okay, fair? Just with going along with that with um, Upwork, like, I mean, obviously there's probably varying levels of skill. You, you encountered that Upwork. Yes. And I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you a couple of the, my cool th little secrets that I use with Upwork. Uh, I, I ran a couple of really large organizations. I actually ran Mitsubishi Electric here in the U.S. for a number of years, and I also ran About.com. And whenever I had a key, key critical project that absolutely could not fail, what are you going to do? You just bet on the team? 
I never dared. I never did. I'd actually run a team and then I'd get a private secret little team duplicating the exact same project. And at that point, it wasn't Elance. It was actually had to be done kind of rogue. But uh, I mean, actually, if it's a critical project to me, I'll even run it through. And here's what I find. I'll put it out. I'll put a, a project out for bid and I'll probably on average have 40 or 50 people come back to me. I'll also go carefully look for someone that has the right skill. I'll extend an invite to them to bid on the project. Then what I find is I narrow it and scope it down. And I'd say that I'm delighted about 50% of the time. I presently have an engineering team that I engage in Pakistan. And I found that engineer, and he's amazing. He, he can outperform any engineer that I've ever met in the US. I always used to keep a very senior engineer that cost me like $150,000 a year on staff. I don't do that anymore. I have, uh, I have and Pakistan, they're freaking trying to blow, blow us up if you haven't figured it out. And I'd trust Kashif and his team over, maybe not my brother, but close to it. Um, so they're actually very loyal, hardworking if you get the right one. But you do get, and you can find out pretty quickly. When you're using Upwork, you put milestones in place. And so if they're not hitting their milestone, you don't have to dump all the money in there. Now they're concerned, are they going to pay? So typically you fund the project. And then if they don't hit the milestone, you don't have to release the funds to them. My experience is, is probably about one out of four that I engage with. It's like, eh, okay, it wasn't all that, but I just quickly cut it loose. But I'd say one out of three is like amazing, and I go on to utilize them over and over and over and over. So uh, Upwork, you do have to be a little careful. Vet it out, don't take the first one that comes along. Uh, cheapest is sometimes best, but not always. But I will also say that most expensive, most of the time isn't the best. I've, I've had better success kind of with lower mid-tier resources than I have high-end. Did I go off on that enough or too much or? Okay. So the ones that are hungrier, yeah, and what you'll see is, is they have a ranking. It's a, it's a social proof tool. So you can actually see how many projects they've done, how much money they've made doing it, how long they've been doing it, and all the comments and feedback that everyone had using them. And so oftentimes you get someone that's done something once or twice that's hungry, uh, you can actually develop a long term. And inevitably, as soon as you find them and you get a good relationship and you pay them, they'll say, hey, hey, let's just, can I work directly for you? And then you can go off the system. And I don't know how Upwork feels about that, but you know, oftentimes that's what I end up doing after a period of time is just taking them and hiring them directly. But I found amazing, incredible resources on that. Uh, ghost writing books. I haven't done that, but I know peers that have had people ghost write a book for them. <laughs> Uh, to, you know, major editing, to just about anything you can imagine with a really high level of patents. I, I filed for a patent. Here in the U.S., to just file the patent costs about $5,000. Guess how much it cost me? Guess, come on. <laughs> uh, a little bit more than that. It was four fifty. dollars It's $450 is what it cost for me to do my patent. And I think it was actually, and the reality is, is most of the, the patent offices here in the U.S. are taking and outsourcing it to these guys anyway. So it's actually, it's actually a really ama amazing, powerful resource. And one that, you know, I, I, you guys need to be utilizing. So you're saying we could get patents off of Upwork? You can file for patents. You can do filing trademarks. Or you can, India is like the, the supreme, very best attorneys at patent work that there is. And so you can actually engage attorneys directly in India. Now here's the downside of this, is it does require more collaboration, a little bit better, more efficient communication. Here you can sit in a room and kind of have a chat, and I don't know, I don't, I think I, I don't know I like that style. Oh, what do you think maybe a little softer? You can't do that with these guys, okay? You gotta be able to write a spec and say, oh, no, no, I want a website that looks like this with these colors, example of this, and you have to be able to articulate it and send it over the wall. So it does take a little bit more hand-holding, a little bit more work, but uh, number one, you'll be able to actually find an engineer. Anyone had a difficult time finding an app programmer? Um, my son uh, just graduated from the IS program at BYU, and I can't afford him. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my son. As a matter of fact, I can't even get him to build his, uh, uh, my wife uh, for a Mother's Day present, uh, uh, a little app for her real estate. So I, I'm just saying that if you actually want to find someone and someone you can afford, Upwork is a great way to, to do it. And it is. It's all the way from uh, mobile apps to web app locations, you name it, you can get it there. Okay, I know we're really short on time. So I'm going to... Uh, 
We got five minutes? Okay, would you guys rather talk really quickly about the steps and sequences in zigzag principle and what it takes to get a business off the ground? Or would you like to ask questions? Keep this dialogue going. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'll do, I'll do zigzag really, really quickly for you. Uh, the context and premise is, is, is out of a, a thousand business plans that are submitted, only one business plan ever gets funded. Out of that business plan that gets funded, do you know only one in ten of those businesses actually end up succeeding? Uh, and then the sad news is, is the guy that ends up succeeding, only one in ten of those actually become financially independent. So, I was hiking in the Himalayas back in like 2010-ish, 9-ish, 10-ish, and I just had several of my peers, dear friends that had been financially independent, that went bankrupt. It was a major meltdown of the economy, and I was over climbing the Himalayas with my family and uh, doing what was called climb high, sleep low, so we were only getting about 600 feet of elevation a day. And I'm looking up there at Mount Everest, and I realize, hey, the problem here is, is, is all these hikers in business are, have the inclination angle too high. I mean, when I hike up a mountain, I don't go woo -woo -woo up Everest or I die. When I'm skiing down a ski slope, I don't... Any of you skiers? What happens if... I mean, sometimes you can do it. I love to go fast, but if I put my, my tips of my solemns straight down on a double black diamond, odds are I'm going to crash and die. And so the key in business... The key in mountain climbing, the key in skiing, is, is actually to zigzag. It's to decrease the angle of declination. Rather than go climb up straight up Mount Everest, I have to zigzag my way and kind of weave my way very care carefully. Uh, the result, when you do that, when I, I've now found or co-found like 45 businesses, of those I've had like 16 failures, but I've had 18 multi-million dollar wins, one out of three. The difference is, is declining the level of inclination. So it's not that I still don't go for really big, crazy ideas, really big, big ideas, but I don't have that be the first step because that's a one in 10. So pull the inclination angle down, and the zig number one is always a drive to profitability. So I'd encourage you as you're looking for businesses, the first thing you do is look around you and say, with the resources I have, $5 and an iPhone, How do I get to profitability with that? Pull the inclination da angle down. Uh, rather than saying, I'm going to create an app that slices and dices and is the kitchen sink and, and solves world hunger and <sighs> inclination angle, uh, one in a billion chance. Pull down the declination angle and drive to profitability. Zig number one, always drive to profitability. Uh, the comment that I make is, is in the early stages of, com of a company, I'll actually, I'll, I won't dance naked, but I would go out in the freeway of I-15 there and I would put a tutu on and I would dance around in the freeway if it meant being able to get to, to profitability. So what's your tutu? What can you put on? Typically it's service oriented, but what can you do that can quickly drive you to profitability? Once you get to profitability, you have to have what's called guardrails in place. I always use four, at least four. Number one is, is how much money am I willing to commit at this before I call it quits? Number two is, is how much time am I willing to commit to this? Not duration of time, but quantity of time. I'm going to give up watching an extra hour of, of, I don't know, some TV show a day or something, but commit how much time. Third is, is what's the duration? I typically will say, if I can't do this in three months, then dead. And then I always guardrail my relationship capital. So there's only one worse thing when I'm skiing and going straight down the hill and dying, because I get a real exhilaration out of that. It's doing this. Okay. I'm going to zigzag. That's what a lot of technicians do in their business. That's how Main Street USA gets ran. They run off chasing profitability. They actually don't get to it and they end up in the weeds. So you have to guard row and say this is the distinct stopping point and if, I'm, if I don't get to that point then I'm going to call it a failure. The key to, to success, in my opinion, is learning to fail very efficiently. I'm very proud when I fail. I don't apologize for fail, failure. It's failing efficiently that really matters. And you know what? I hope each one of you this semester has a failure. I really do. No harm, no foul. 
Take whatever you can afford. Take five bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 500 bucks, 5,000 if you got a rich uncle. And fail. Get after it, but put a, put a boundary on it and then hit it. And then once you hit that guardrail, then don't crash through, hit the trees and die when you're skiing. I mean, go fast, that's one way to die. The other one is to ski and hit the trees. So you've got a guardrail and then you have to turn. Zig number two, once you hit profitability, you're viable. <sighs> you're breathing, you have oxygen. Zig number two is, is add processes and resources. If you do that prematurely, it creates all sorts of chaos in this first stage. So the first thing you do is you figure out what works, what doesn't work. You're the butcher, the baker, and the patty cake maker. So you've actually got to figure it all out and document it. And then the second phase is when you start adding processes and resources. And, and only after that, when you hit that level of profitability, again, guard drawing it, then you add a scale element. The third is exactly the same that, you know, most people start there. And it oftentimes it takes me five or six times. Many of you mentioned Curtis Blair. He, it took him five years before he got his scale element. His multiple attempts at it, and five years, but at least you have oxygen. <sighs> you're breathing. You're breathing. You're oxygen. You're not alive. You're not over here dying, choking to death without any money. Um, you know, people say, oh, I only want to do what I want to do. And you know what? That's the most miserable way to live your life, doing what you want to do, but dying doing it. And so always drive to profitability. Second phase is add a process and add a recess. And then the third element is the scale element. All that is is take your initial target name, pull the declination angle down, and drive yourself to profitability really quickly. And we're out of time. Any final question and then we'll call it? Make sense? Please nod your head if it made sense at all because I did a four hour presentation about four minutes there. Can you touch on that last element again? Scale? Yeah, scale. That's... A scale element is a business, is, it's a, something that you do that is making money even when you're not there. A scale element is something that you do once and replicates very dramatically. A scale element is an app. You're stupid if the first thing you could do is go to try build an app. It's just too steep of an inclination angle. Pull it back down, figure out what you can do to service locally, learn the ins and outs, then a the next phase, then build the app once you got the basis on it. A scale element is something you build that replicates over and over and over and over and over. Something you do while you're hiking in the Himalayas or skiing that's making you money. That's what a scale element is. Okay? All right, guys, thanks. Good luck. Knock this semester out, guys.